Good morning, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Google+. This is Rich again, back for your first video blog of the day for Saturday, September 3rd, 2016, around 7 o'clock in the morning in Berwicka, Massachusetts. It's going to be a sunny day out today, around 72, 73 degrees. It's transitioning into fall. Tomorrow, supposed to be another sunny day. Highs around 74, 75. Then, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday is all up in the air weather-wise because Hermine is going to wander around the Mid-Atlantic and southern New England could be on the northern fringes with rainfall and some wind but there's some projections like outside of the greater Boston area the rainfall projected is going to be well under an inch. Some places might only get a tenth or two two tenths of an inch of rain, which this will not be a drought buster as what they were predicting. But it's subject to t change because these hurricanes could decide to go any direction because there's a call of uncertainty. Some news to report. The Boston Red Sox crushed the Oakland A's by the score of 16-2 to last night. Um, they're solidifying the wild card spot so far. And also, the low spinners are going to the playoffs for the New York Penn League for the first time since 2009. So congratulations to the low spinners. They won the division. Clayton Kershaw. L.A. Dodgers ace pitcher who's missed most of the second half with a back injury is going to make a rehab start in the minor leagues. This was good news for the Dodgers because they need him for the playoffs. And Lawrence Taylor, pro football Hall of Famer, was arrested for suspicious of DUI. He's going to blame he was set up for this. I guarantee you that. <laughs> That's about it on the news. My first video blog subject of the day is about the Hockey News Magazine. The Hockey News Magazine covers all hockey. It's based out of Toronto, Canada, and it's been around close to 70 years. The Hockey News was founded in 1947 by Ken McKenzie and Will Coke Day, and it covered... Um, the National Hockey League. Its first issue, it was a newspaper form. It was only about f like 20 cents. And for many years, it was the best newspaper for hockey. It covered NHL. It also covered junior leagues and the minor leagues and college hockey and international hockey. Plus, they had other s segments like um, profiles of players and some history about hockey and sometimes they did lightest side stuff and they have some columns about about like hockey like hockey writers that would have columns in the hockey news and they had a beginning section of like the like the weeks past big hockey stories plus they had a cartoon of hockey puppet which was very very funny and a crossword puzzle and also they had um a like guess the hockey player and at one time they had ads selling hockey equipment and other stuff. They would like once or twice a year they would have um, like to, um, sections about hockey books and hockey equipment and in the summer times they would have a hockey summer cams. Originally the hockey news was published almost weekly for many years. It was a newspaper format until 2003 when it was switched over to a magazine format. It 
it's, it at one time had a circulation of over 500,000, but now it's down to 100,000 um, in circulation, but there's many subscribers, about um, 225 people read the hockey news each week, and over 2 million go on their website, on thehockeynews.com. They currently publish 18 issues a year. Four of them are very special issues. In February, there's the Prospect Watch, the top 100 prospects of the NHL. In May, they have a draft pe preview special issue. In August, they have the yearbook that's the upcoming 2000, um, the upcoming NHL season. In October, they have a special magazine they put out each year, which sometimes it could be the best teams or the greatest rivalries or other stuff each year. And some of the writers who have written for Hockey Magazine over the years for editors, Bob McKenzie, he was no relation to Ken McKenzie who founded it. Um, Bob McKenzie's now on like TSN and also Steve Dryden who's a TSN producer. They were past editors and writers. Currently the editor-in-chief is Jason Kay and some of the staff writers include Ken Campbell and Ryan Kennedy and Mark Larkin. Also, the Hockey News has published a few books over the years. One was about the 100 greatest NHL players of all time back in 1997. Wayne Gretzky was number one. That, they did that to commemorate their 50th anniversary. Also, a couple of times they would publish a, a big like um, book about like hockey each year which was pretty interesting told like the like this each year by year of the nhl also they had like a couple uh, they in 2007 they revived uh the updated like the top 60 nhl players since 1967 during the expansion era and they had a couple of other books like come out, out like the top Greatest teams of all time, each individual NHL teams, and then like minor pro and college and international. And also, they had one time the top 100 greatest um, Montreal Canadian players of all time. That was interesting. And the Hockey News also on the website has a podcast, which is good. I listen to it from time to time. You get a lot of information with the Hockey News. Currently, the Hockey News is published by TVA Sports. They have offices in Toronto, Canada. They have a U.S. office in Buffalo, New York. I've been subscribing to the Hockey News on and off since 1998, and it's a great magazine to read, even though they um, have very like limited the amount of issues, but it's still informative, and they get Usually the NHL team reports by beat writers from each NHL team they contributed to it. And that's about it on that. I will be back later. Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Google Plus with two more video blogs. The surprise today is about the uh, the second video blog will be about the former MDA Telethon, which they always would show, show Labor Day weekend, hosted by Jerry Lewis, tell you about that. The third and final video blog of the night's personality profile. Tonight's personality profile will be about the late great WW, former WWF world champion, Stan the Man Stasiak from Beaver, um, Fall, Beaver Creek, Oregon. Keep calm, everybody. I'm Julie Button Guy, Molly Wilson of of WCC Alex and has nice legs. Elizabeth Hart so so stunning. She's the best. Amy Sweezy's awesome, awesome Amy. Linda Church of WPAX Channel 11 New York is such a cool girl. She got the best legs in New York City and an awesome smile. And Bobby Gibbs of ABC 11 has that sweet southern accent and she's got the nice legs as well. And in the words of Sean Luchikow.